So, have you had a monster throw recently, but it was a sector foul? It's one of the most common mistakes, but fixing them is actually a lot easier than you think. And we're gonna discuss three simple ways to do so in this video, check it out. Hey everybody, it's Eric Johnson from Airte Throws Nation, and in today's YouTube video, what we're gonna discuss are sector fouls. Sector fouls are one of those things that drive everybody nuts. They happen a lot, and it's really affects, it has a big impact on beginning throwers. Even the best will hit a sector foul or hit the cage. Sector fouls are really pretty much an easy point. You have two things that are gonna really contribute to the point. Where's the high point of the discus, and where are the hips? Sometimes the high point can be in the right spot, but the hips are facing this. Whatever direction your hips are facing, is typically the direction you're gonna throw the disc. So real simple, so if you're constantly throwing right side sector fouls, if you're a right-handed thrower, your hips are typically facing outside of the sector. So what do we have to do? We have to get those hips inside the sector so that we can pull and place the discus right in the middle. So what are one of some of the common mistakes? Now, one of the common mistakes are as we fall, Boom, kids are gonna fall in and you're gonna notice here, right now my sector is here looking at my red lines. And so if I fall into the sector and I'm kind of falling, my discus gets over to here. I'm landing too much at three, sometimes four. And then what happens is, we're coming here. So let's talk about the three things that lead to them that are the most common causes for sector fouls. And we'll talk about how we're gonna fix them. So one of the things that can happen is when an athlete falls in and they don't come over here and they're falling into the ring and they fall this way, oftentimes the discus is over here rather than the hips turning and the discus being over here. You're gonna notice that little change. So if I fall into the ring, and so that is a pillar one. That's our start of our chain reaction. When we get to the beginning, if we don't have the right position to come around here, start up, shift to our axis, our pillar two, feel our three, and get that high point up here, that's gonna be it. So falling into the ring is one of the most common things. So what does that do? That's the cause because what and where are the hips facing when I fall? The hips are facing here. And if everything's falling, the hips are still out. And this is why so many young kids, so they're trying to throw, they lose the right side, the hips are here, and the discus is gonna come off early. Don't feel bad, this happens at all levels. Perkovich, two-time Olympic gold medalist, hitting the cage, Alakna number two all time on his final throw hits the cage. So it happens to the best. So reason number one is you gotta look at it as a two part thing. As you fall into the circle, you get the high point of the orbit off, you know, the position point of where the orbit is. So it's lined up, it's falling this way. And so it's throwing this way and that leads to the hips. Second common cause is the incorrect orbit this way which leads to athletes falling back. Now you have the position of the orbit, the alignment of the orbit, right? Falling and the alignment off. And then you have athletes who are coming around and they're reaching up and now their high point is down here. The shoulders are now falling back and so now they're falling in and as they go this way again, you're gonna notice where the hips are. They're facing outside. So incorrect orbit is another one of those variables. Recently, I had a kid DM me on Instagram. He said, can you give me some tips? And I was like, sure. Here was just a quick feedback. He had his arm up like that. And then thankfully he messaged me back a couple weeks later and said he PR'd 20 feet in the discus and, and it was changing all the orbits. We'll use that for another YouTube video. But having the incorrect orbit path will cause the shift and then thus the shift through the power position. So we can't get our pillar five, we can't turn our hips through, and then you're pulling off and that's what's leading to sector foul to the right as well. So that's issue number two. Quick fix, level out the shoulders and get yourself on the right orbit path. And so when we do that, when we get here and we set the right orbit and we're here, we're gonna be able to bring the hips around. Third problem that leads to sector fouls is jumping at the finish. Now, there's a right way and a wrong way 
to jump. And most people um, that advocate going straight vertical, that is not um, something that I'm a proponent in. We want acceleration of the delivery side all the way in, all the way into the circle. So I'm moving through that block. And obviously there's a point for reversing thrower where they, you know, some of the top reversing throwers are off the ground at delivery. But for the most part, the guys that are staying connected to the ground and pulling through, and we've talked about that in other videos, but the point is what we want to do is as we can stay down and work the hips through. So looking at some of your greatest throwers in history, and I'm a big fan of German throwers, you know, Jurgen Scholl, Lars Riedel, and looking at Robert Harding. And one of the things they do phenomenally well, non-reversers, you really see that hip moving and accelerating into the sector, which creates the big whip. And again, notice where the hip position is, it's guiding. In fact, the hips on most of your elite throwers are facing to the left of center. So they're pulling the right side, pulling the discus in, and you're getting the release here. So that third key thing is we avoid jumping. The longer we can work through. So the minute I start to jump, and if you're jumping super aggressively, as soon as I go vertical, my hips are no longer rotating. Where are they facing again? So if I'm coming out of the throw and everything's in and I go vertical, my hips are gonna be here and I can catch that from sometimes and sometimes I can't, but now we're going up instead of rotating around and lifting through the finish this way. Fourth reason of a sector foul is sometimes when kids are pulling here, they're gonna pull the discus across or they haven't learned yet how to create that pushing, rotating finish. And so what happens is, is they lift and their hips are here, they're too much arm and that's gonna be pulling them to the left side or they're going to just be over rotating all the way, stay with the over rotation and yank the discus out of the sector to the opposite side. But that is probably one of the lesser frequent mistakes. It is common and it does happen of course, but the right hand or the delivery side is typically where you see the sector falls. Lefties obviously are gonna be fouling to the left and right-handed throwers fouling to the right. So let's review real quick. So again, number one is cutting, falling into the circle, getting the high point, the orbit point in the wrong position so that the athlete's rotating and shifting and they're falling off and they're throwing to the right. Item number two is the actual orbit path being in the wrong spot, high, having a low point at this point of the ring. And so the shoulders are gonna come in and they're gonna be coming off and coming over and the hips, they don't get around in that position because they're coming off the right leg. And so a lot of times, if they're here, they're gonna throw sector foul. And the third reason for sector fouls is jumping at the finish. Again, when we hit the power position, we don't wanna be <clears throat> jumping straight up because a lot of times that athletes that are efficient at that, they might turn in the air. And sometimes when they're turning in the air, actually the point where they left the ground, the hips are facing here. Those are the three things. And you really wanna fix that. Those are really simple things to key on, understand how to fix, look at your throw, see if one of those three items is what's causing you those common sector foul issues. And this, I guarantee you, will help you get yourself back on track. So as we come down to crunch time at those big division, those end of the season meets where we're getting to our regional, our area, our districts, our states, all these things, we can get those big throws to be even bigger because you're going to pull them all the way into the sector and you're not going to be shaking your head because you left your new PR sitting outside. So thanks so much. Really like to see what else you interested in hearing about. Please comment below. We'll be adding that to our queue. If you did like this video and find it helpful, please hit the subscribe button, turn on the notifications and hit us that thumbs up. Thank you so much and we will see you on the next video.